Hi, my name is Helen Cassidy. I'm a lecturer at the IINH and I'm also the owner at Booth Hugs. At my clinic, I see quite a few females with hormonal issues. So I'm just going to talk about three things which you could do to try and support your hormones. The first thing is to consume phytoestrogens in your diet. Phytoestrogens are components of particular foods that help to balance female hormones. So whether your estrogen, for example, is too high, as might be the case if you have bad PMS, or if your estrogen level is a little bit too low, as in the case when you are entering into your perimenopausal stage. Phytoestrogens can help to balance that level so that it can bring it up a little bit or bring it down a little bit as required. Sources of phytoestrogens include something like miso, which is a type of fermented soy that you might have heard of. And um, you can buy it in a paste, which is like this one here, the clear spring one. And you just add that to water. You can have it as kind of like a broth. Or you can buy it in sachets either, such as this one, which is King Sober brand, which also sounds too good as well. So that's one source of phytoestrogen. Other sources of phytoestrogens include things like chickpeas, so including them in curry maybe half of your chicken that you have in a chicken curry and including some chickpeas instead, or buying a hummus or making a hummus and having that every day, or something like lentils as well. Again, adding them to meatballs or adding them to a bolognese or including them in a salad. So try to incorporate phytoestrogens into your diet every day is a good idea. And certainly I would be encouraging somebody who's in perimenopausal um, stage or who's experiencing symptoms like hot flushes or anxiety or insomnia to try and include two portions per day. The second thing I'm going to talk about are omega-3 oils and I suppose it's really trying to get a balance between omega-6 and omega-3. Um, the balance really should be about three or four omega-6 to one omega-3 but often in clinic I would find that clients are not really eating that many sources of omega-3 so that the balance is entirely skewed. So sources of omega-3 include oily fish, so the likes of trout, salmon, sardines, mackerel. Buying some of those in their tinned form is absolutely fine, uh, including them in a curry or buying it as a smoked salmon or a smoked mackerel. And trying to have that oily fish two or three times per week if possible. Vegetarian sources of omega-3 include ground flaxseed, ground chia seed, pumpkin seeds and walnuts and again trying to include those on a daily basis is a good idea. Only a small amount, maybe a tablespoon and possibly sprinkled on your porridge or in a smoothie or if it's the like of walnuts or pumpkin seeds, toasting them lightly and including them in a salad. The third thing I'm going to talk about is actually a little bit different in that it is uh, stress. Stress is a very common factor as part of female hormones and it's because stress hormones are extremely disruptive to the balance of estrogen and progesterone in the body. And whether that is in your 20s or 30s and you're experiencing painful periods or bad PMS or whether that's later on into your 40s and 50s when you're experiencing very bad symptoms of perimenopause. Trying to understand what the sources of stress are and to get them under control is a key part of a consult with a client who's experiencing these symptoms. Uh, sources can, of stress can be actually feeling stress, so whether it's the husband, the kids, the job, whatever it is, and trying to manage that a little bit better. Uh, it can also come from your diet. So sources of stress or stress hormones in our diet, for example, include the likes of caffeine. So drinking too much coffee, drinking too much tea, um, having an imbalanced blood sugar where you're eating a lot of carbs uh, and particularly a lot of refined carbs or sugar which can um, I suppose impact on your blood sugar sending it into swings up and down during the day can be a source of stress so we would always look at that and try and even it out a little bit. So there's three ideas it's by no means a finite list um, we talked about phytoestrogens, uh, omega-3 fats and sources of stress. Uh, with any client who comes to see me, we'd obviously go through all the factors which may be impacting on female hormones and try and come up with a plan in order to support her.